the, the question is, you know, the controlled environment agriculture, CEA, whether uh, this technology can be the solution to, you know, food crisis or food shortage, right? I was really glad to hear uh, the, the UA Minister of uh, Climate Change actually mention about uh, she's strong support of, uh, you know, CEA technology. Because, uh, you know, Middle East is the area many uh, CEA companies are actually focusing on to really uh, deploy uh, their technology. But when you really think about uh, food shortage, there are many different uh, dimensions. You know, the first one would be whether you can have enough food for the, the human uh, races on Earth. Or, you know, some countries, they really uh, worry about, uh, you know, food sufficiency and then uh, self-sustainability. This uh, self-sufficiency issue came out a lot uh, after pandemic, when there is a disruption in uh, trade, and then also like the regional conflict like uh, Ukraine war. Those are actually causing uh, you know, the issue with uh, self-sufficiency. And then if you really think about uh, you know, different countries and different regions, you know, each country or different regions has uh, different needs for, uh, you know, controlled environment agriculture. One example would be, like, think about Antarctica, right? The, the most cold climate on Earth. There is no, uh, you know, plant. But uh, currently, the Korean researchers in Sejong Research Center in Antarctica, they are growing, you know, the watermelons, you know, cucumber, pepper, and tomato, all different kinds of fruits and vegetables in uh, container farms. And those researchers are not uh, really uh, farmers. They don't know how to grow uh, those vegetables and fruits. But all the system is actually monitored from central location in Korea. And then the expert in that monitoring uh, room is providing instruction to the researcher. So the, the results is, you know, they can really enjoy fresh uh, fruits and vegetables so that uh, improving their well-being, but also, uh, you know, by uh, cultivating those greens in, uh, you know, cold place like Antarctica, it's also good for their mental health as well. And another example, cold uh, example is like Mongolia. I know uh, many controlled environment uh, agriculture company, they are really focusing on hot uh, weather. But, uh, you know, the Mongolia has, uh, Mongolia has been importing 40% uh, of their uh, vegetables and then almost 95% of fruits from uh, other countries. When I visited Mongolia, the quality of uh, the leafy greens are really, really bad. You know, uh, I visited their, you know, very premium supermarkets, but uh, the leafy green quality is, uh, you know, as poor as I almost cannot, uh, I almost don't want to buy it, right? And then if I, when I ask Mongolian consumers uh, whether they consume uh, vegetables, and they say yes, and then I ask what kind of vegetable they consume, they say it's uh, like uh, tome uh, potatoes, you know, sweet potatoes, and like, uh, you know, it's all uh, root greens. You know, for them, they never, uh, you know, enjoyed eating uh, the leafy greens. So one of the projects uh, being uh, conducted in uh, Mongolia with support from a local Mongolian company and then the Ulaanbaatar city is building an indoor vertical farm uh, near outside of uh, Ulaanbaatar and then producing uh, 70 tons uh, of uh, leafy greens uh, every month. So we strongly believe uh, this will uh, improve the, the health of uh, Mongolian consumers, right? And another example is uh, the Northern Canada. Uh, the one uh, city in Northern Canada, uh, they have a very high uh, obesity and then diabetes rates among uh, you know, young uh, kids. The reason is, the, again, is that they don't have a chance to eat uh, leafy greens and fresh vegetables. So the local city actually uh, called uh, help for support to uh, Korean uh, the Institute, uh, KIST, Korean Institute of Science and uh, Technology. 
So what they have done is they actually developed uh, the vegetable called uh, bok choy uh, in an uh, indoor vertical farm. And we call uh, that bok choy as super bok choy. That's because bok choy has uh, some special ingredients which help uh, you know, uh, reducing uh, fat, uh, fat from the body and then also uh, reducing the obesity. And the KIST was able to develop bok choy with uh, 2.4 times higher uh, ingredient, which, uh, the ingredient in the bok choy. And then they also uh, able to produce bok choy two times uh, as fast as you know, uh, traditional farming. So those are the some uh, you know, examples in the uh, cold country, right? And in a hot country like in Dubai, as uh, the minister of UAE said, they are already uh, using uh, controlled environment agriculture in here, right? For producing tomatoes, you know, blackberries, you know, and leafy greens. But uh, another project uh, currently being undertaken in uh, UAE is actually producing uh, the animal feed in indoor vertical farm. I found a statistic saying the Abu Dhabi is second, uh, large, second country in terms of importing alfalfa. And they are importing alfalfa from like US and uh, also in China. And their import of alfalfa has grown, I think, 35 times, and 35% for the uh, past 10 years. But think about you know, producing alfalfa in the US, and then you have to dry the alfalfa so that you can actually transport to UAE. And then once you get alfalfa in UAE, now you have to add water into the alfalfa and then mixing uh, animal uh, feed and then feed to the cow, right? So I, I hope I can produce alfalfa from indoor vertical farm, but we cannot. But, uh, we can actually produce a barley sprout very easily in the indoor vertical farm. And barley sprout ha has very good nutrition for the cattle. And then also it's much cheaper than alfalfa. And then also there are many uh, research done on mixing barley sprout to uh, TMR, the animal feed, can improve uh, the productivity. One research says, uh, the, the meat, the, the weight growth of the, the beef can uh, be quicker uh, more than two times. And then the, the quality of uh, meat can improve. For the, the cow milk, cow, uh, the milk cows, the milk production can improve by 20%. And then the protein content in the milk can also improve. So, we are actually working with uh, one of the, the local company in uh, Abu Dhabi to you know, develop the, the barley sprout uh, into a vertical farm, and then we want to conduct uh, research uh, with uh, the, the cattle company as well. And, we, and then, you know, uh, today the UAE minister actually mentioned about uh, the agriculture consumes the most uh, resources. I think that's really true. Uh, I heard 70% of fresh water are wasted uh, or used in uh, agriculture. You know, it's very simple. If you give water to the plants, 95% of water just disappear. It's only less than 5% of water is actually consumed by a uh, plant. But uh, controlled environment agriculture, we use uh, less than 5% of water used by uh, traditional agriculture. And then, uh, you know, we can also recycle the water. So the water consumption is very low. And another statistic says 30% uh, of uh, the agricultural land disappeared in the past, uh, I think, 30 years. But in uh, controlled environment agriculture, we don't uh, make land uh, you know, bad. And then we can actually uh, increase the productivity of uh, you know, agriculture by uh, you know, six times, eight times, 10 times. 
basically we can actually stack up the, the layers. Then we can uh, produce much more uh, product. And another good uh, side of uh, controlled environment agriculture is no pesticides used. Typically, I believe six billion tons of uh, pesticides are used in uh, agriculture, but uh, we don't use uh, any uh, pesticides. And in terms of uh, the, the waste of uh, food, only 67% of uh, you know, the, the crops harvested in traditional uh, agriculture can be edible. So almost like one third, you know, you cannot eat. But the, the crops from uh, indoor vertical farm, the rate goes up to 97%. So we, we don't uh, waste anything. And 45% of uh, fresh vegetables are wasted uh, during the transportation. And then 40, about 50% uh, of uh, also the, the fresh vegetables are wasted because uh, you know, it doesn't the supply chain issue as well. But by producing uh, you know, the, the, the crops locally and then uh, reducing uh, food miles, you don't, you're not going to have this kind of waste. And in addition to saving the waste, you know, we can produce uh, the vegetables uh, throughout the year, uh, three, 365 days a year. And then the productivity rate is uh, at least uh, two times faster than uh, traditional agriculture. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, if you look at countries like, uh, you know, Singapore, they also want to do, uh, you know, the food, uh, self-sufficient food supply within Singapore. But they have very uh, limited land. One of the benefits of, uh, you know, indoor vertical farm is we can actually do agriculture anywhere, any place in the city. So one example is uh, the metro farm in uh, Seoul. So we actually converted unused space in Korean Seoul metro station into a smart farm. So I, I actually wanted to show the picture, but when we think about uh, changing that place, that place was completely empty, it's dead space, but uh, we revived that space into you know, indoor vertical farm with a salad cafe, and then also we developed uh, you know, the agriculture academy for uh, kindergarten uh, kids. And also with the Singapore uh, Food Agency, we have been discussing about uh, you know, using the land below the, the underpass. Because uh, below the underpass, there is no sunlight, so that land is completely wasted. But we are actually utilizing that land for uh, indoor vertical farm. And another uh, project currently being uh, discussed is you know, developing indoor vertical farm in Manhattan. Right? The, the vegetable price in New Jersey versus uh, Manhattan, the Manhattan is typically uh, 2.5 to 3 times higher than the, the price of uh, vegetables in New Jersey. That's because uh, the transportation costs from New Jersey to uh, New York. There is only one route you can transport uh, vegetable to Manhattan, which is the, the George Washington uh, Bridge. And then, you know, after the pandemic, there are lots of empty spaces in the buildings of Manhattan. So, Excuse me, Mr. Baku, could I kindly ask you to conclude uh, this series of uh, very exciting projects? Yeah. Thank you. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Last few so words. So Manhattan is another one. So we want to make self-sustainable, uh, you know, farm uh, with the, the restaurant uh, connecting to the, the, the farm as well. But, uh, you know, the... The CEA also has uh, many uh, you know, issues because uh, we are being criticized uh, with using uh, lots of energy. But I believe uh, uh, we can solve that pro problem because the, one of the things we are currently focusing on is the consumption of uh, energy in our LED lights. And for example, we were able to reduce uh, the power consumption by 10% every year. Park, could I kindly ask you to so that we? Yeah.
Th thank you. Thank you very much. I think the, the list of examples that you have been giving uh, is incredibly, uh, is incredibly uh, stunning and uh, highlights how much productivity can be increased and also uh, all the extreme conditions or frontier conditions in which uh, food can be produced efficiently with economic models that, that are viable. So...